Good morning. My name's Jeff Yelland. I'm one of the ministers at St Paul's here in Dorking. And yes, we are still uh, recording here from our homes for the time being, but we are looking to how we might open St Paul's Church quite soon. So please watch out for news which will come up on our website or in our notices from over the next few weeks. But let me welcome you this morning, especially if it's your first time coming to spend time with us uh, via YouTube or the app that you're using to see us this morning. It's lovely to welcome you and we do hope that you are managing to survive through this time of lockdown still for, for some uh, and it's still very difficult especially if you are having to isolate and still be away from your family so if you do need support of any kind then please do email us at the address which is support at supportsdorking.org.uk that's support at supportsdorking.org.uk as our service proceeds this morning it's great that we have Helena and Ian who will be leading our song worship together with the Lister family and uh, it's lovely to welcome Catherine Barker and Jane English who will also be taking part in our service this morning Catherine will be leading our intercessions and uh, Jane will be reading from Matthew's Gospel before our associate vicar Alex comes to preach. A little later in the service Heather Goddard will be interviewing one of our pastoral assistants Moya Weeks so we look forward to that too. Let's take a moment to, to be still. I'd like to share with you uh, a few verses from today's psalm. It's one of my favourites because it talks about how intimately God knows us and cares for us. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? Father, we thank you this morning that there is nowhere we can go where your presence is not already there. Father, we thank you too that you are no further away than our believing. So enable us to follow you today, Lord, to rest in your love as we worship you together. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let us share the greeting together. If you're able and you'd like to stand, then please do. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. We begin our service with a hymn of praise by Isaac Watts. Jesus shall reign where'er the sun. The words are taken from verses from Psalm 72, written by or for King Solomon. But Watts has interpreted them in the light of Jesus, David's greatest son and the promised Messiah and describes his universal kingdom. Jesus shall reign where the sun doth his successive journeys run. His kingdom stretch from shore to shore till moon shall wax and wane no Shall endless prayer be made, and princes throng to crown his head. His name, like sweet perfume, shall rise with every morning sacrifice. People and realms of every tongue dwell on his love with sweetest song and infant voices shall proclaim their early blessings on his name blessings abound where'er he reigns the prisoner leaps to lose his chains a weary Let 
Let every creature rise and bring peculiar honors to our King. Angels descend with songs again, and earth repeats the loud Amen. Thank you, Helena and Ian. We now come to our time of for our prayer of preparation. It's a time when we reflect and bring our confession before God to say sorry for those things that which we have thought and said and done, or which we hadn't done. But we have this opportunity to come before God, to bring our confession, to know his forgiveness, to know his cleansing and to know his healing. So we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ died to sin once for all and now he lives. Let us renew our resolve to have done with all that is evil and confess our sins in penitence and faith. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As God's forgiven people, shall we stand together and say the Gloria. Please stand if you are able, otherwise please do be comfortable. And we say together, Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory, Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God. You take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. A collect prayer for this sixth Sunday after Trinity. Creator God, you made us all in your image. May we discern you in all that we see and serve you in all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. During lockdown, the song Be Not Afraid by John Michael Talbot has been a real comfort to me. The chorus, based on verses in Deuteronomy 31, goes like this. Be not afraid. I go before you always. Come, follow me, and I will give you rest. Let us pray. Let us pray for the world. Lord, across the world, each country struggles to move forward following the onslaught of coronavirus, and each country faces its own challenges and tensions. But we pray, Lord, that you will bring world leaders together, 
that in the face of a common enemy, a virus, that they will work together to protect the whole of humanity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our leaders in the UK. Lord, in a week in which we have seen the UK leaders take a step away from doing business with China, we pray for the repercussions of this decision, for our security, for our economic stability. Father, give our leaders wisdom in how they govern, the decisions they make, and how they represent us to the rest of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our church leaders here at St Paul's. Lord, we thank you for our leaders, in particular for Ian and Paul, our dedicated church wardens, who carry a burden of responsibility during this time. Give them strength and wisdom as they care for our church and progress our search for a new vicar. And we thank you that although we do not have a vicar, we have such a great team of ministers caring for us, praying with us, and teaching us the power of your word through the Holy Spirit. We thank you also for Ruth, who was consecrated this week as Bishop of Horsham. We pray for her ministry in Sussex, and that you will work through her to reach and save many people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the sick. Lord, there are many for whom treatment has been postponed because of coronavirus. And whilst hospitals are beginning to get back to normal to some extent, we know the backlog is great. Many are worried and in pain, and the waiting is another burden to bear. Father, we ask you to comfort those who are waiting, to take away their suffering, to fill them with your Holy Spirit, and to help them trust you. Lord, please make the path to treatment and healing smooth and swift. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the bereaved. Lord, please give comfort to all those who are grieving. Bring them comfort and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our community. Lord, we have pulled together as a community over the last few months, and as a church, we have been able to reach and serve so many people. We thank you for this unexpected opportunity and we ask that you will use us as your foot soldiers to bring about long-term change in this town and the villages around. Lord, we long to see Christian revival, and we ask that you will work in and through us to grow your church of believers in Dorking and throughout the Moor Valley. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our relationships with each other. Lord, as lockdown continues to ease, we see people reacting very differently. Some are frightened, others are bold. Help us not to judge each other, but to act kindly, with love and respect for each other. Help us continue to think of the common good, to protect our neighbours through acting selflessly and sacrificially. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us spend a few moments in silent prayer and lift our own worries and needs to our Father, who loves us more than we can know. Amen. Thank you, Catherine, for leading us in our intercessions this morning. We're grateful now to the Lister family who are going to lead us in a lovely song of worship. It's King of Kings, Majesty, a line from a few lines from that are King of Kings, Majesty, God of heaven, living in me, gentle saviour, closest friend, strong deliverer, beginning and end, all within me falls at your throne. Earth and heaven worship you, Love eternal, faithful and true, who bought the nation's ransomed souls, bought this sinner near to your throne, all within me cries out in praise. Father, we thank you that we can gather together to worship you.
Hello, I'm Heather Goddard and for our interview slot this morning we're talking to Moya. Moya's about to start a course on contemplative prayer and we thought it'd be really interesting to find out a little bit more about Moya and about the course. So Moya, tell us a bit about yourself. I am the mother of two daughters who live in Dorking and Rygate. I have six grandchildren. Um, I used to be a physiotherapist and retired about 10, 12 years ago. And you're a spiritual director and a lay pastoral assistant, is that right? I am indeed, yes. I trained as a spiritual director in Southwark um, many years ago um, and more recently as a pastoral assistant. Standard question for St Paul's lockdown interviews, highs and lows of lockdown. Well, the, the low was just really one very big low, which I'm sure many people have experienced, was when I realised that I may be in a, have a high chance of catching the virus if I wasn't very careful and probably wouldn't survive it if I did. So I had to, to face the thought of death, really, which was not easy. Um, but it didn't last very long. I was lucky, just three or four days, I felt really down. And then the thought of all the people around me, the, the highs of this, friends, family, support, home group, um, lifted me out of that. And presumably That's your good. faith as well. Yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. I did pray a little bit more often than I, <laughs> than I sometimes do. <laughs> So at St Paul's we've recently finished the 24-7 prayer course and the course made some of us realise just how rubbish we were at listening to God at contemplative prayer. And Moya has agreed to start a four-week course on contemplative prayer starting this Wednesday. So Moya, how did you discover contemplative prayer and what's it, how has it benefited you? It was when I was um, at a church in Kingswood and we did a Lent course following a book called Sadhana, A Way to God. And that was all about listening to God and being quiet inside. And I got really fired up and enthusiastic about that. And, and it did help me for several years to feel much closer to God. And then of course it faded a bit um, and I haven't done it for a little bit. Then I did the 24 hour prayer um, course and one of the sessions was on contemplative prayer and all that enthusiasm fired up again. <laughs> so when the course starts on Wednesday what can we expect? Well the, the main part of the start of contemplative prayer is centering down so it's learning to relax to to try and get rid of all intruding thoughts and to really feel and and hear the presence of God not easy but very rewarding. And we're going to be trying all of that on Zoom. And if you'd like to join, uh, do look at the Friday email for the details of registering. Um, so it's been lovely talking to you, Moya, in this Thank beautiful you. garden in the middle of Dorking. <laughs> and I look forward to Wednesday and finding out more about listening to God. Thank, Thank you. you. The reading is Matthew 11, 25 to 30. The Father revealed in the Son. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and to those whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the word of the Lord. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you've hidden these things from the wise and the learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. Good morning, my name's Alex. I'm the Associate Vicar here at St Paul's and it's great to be with you. We're just gonna spend a little bit of time looking at this passage together, this really well-known passage, and uh, hearing a bit, uh, listening to Jesus to hear what he says to us this morning. 
This morning when I woke up, uh, I had done two things uh, the night before. I had left the light on in our bathroom and I'd left the window open into our garden. And this morning as I walked into our, uh, the, to the bathroom, there were moths everywhere, all over the walls and all over the ceiling. Loads of them. I had no idea we had this many moths in our garden. I think for many people, they think of faith as being a little bit like a moth. It's camouflaged, it's hard to find, and it's only the lucky few that can discover it, or maybe the foolish few that think they found it. And Jesus does use that analogy in other parts of the Gospels. But here, when he says that things are hidden from the wise and the learned, uh, he's not talking about trying to find faith like a moth. He's talking about finding faith in other ways. He's actually speaking to three different audiences. He's speaking to critics, he's speaking to complacents, and he's speaking to Christ followers. First of all, to the critics. Now in the previous chapter, he said of them, what can I compare this generation? They're like children in a marketplace, calling out. We played the flute for you and you didn't dance. We sang a dirge and you didn't mourn. Jesus says of the critics, whatever I do, you will find fault. He's comparing himself with John. John the Baptist, living this aesthetic, isolated life in the desert. And the critics say he's a crazy guy. Jesus lives in the city, mixing with ordinary people, preaching the good news of God. They say he's a drunkard and a glutton for having meals. Jesus says we can't win. If we're aesthetics, you say that we're crazy. If we mix with people in society, you say that we're lax in our morals. We can't win. If I say I like cheese, you'll say you like chocolate. If I say I like chocolate, you say I like cheese. We cannot win. And there are critics today, aren't there, who look at the Christian faith and say these people are gullible fools. The church is destructive. Even in this time of pandemic, I read an article. The church has done nothing in this time of pandemic. They've missed an opportunity. Others who say pandemic surely proves that there's no case for God. Now those questions in themselves are good questions and we need to find answers and clarity to them. But I don't think that those people who say these statements are actually looking for answers. I think they've already decided for themselves. And Jesus says, in response to those kind of people, two things. First of all, Wisdom is proved right in her actions. Jesus says ultimately, um, the outcome doesn't lie with the critics, it lies with the events. People can critique from the sideline as much as they like, but what actually happens? He says, look at John the Baptist. People's hearts, men and women, are turning to God in ways that have not happened for hundreds and hundreds of years of Jesus' ministry, we say ordinary people are discovering a new life, a new hope, a new purpose in the words that Jesus is speaking. The healed, the sick are healed, the demon possessed are made clean. And today, in this world, millions of people have discovered Jesus for themselves. The most unlikely people in the most unlikely circumstances find hope and peace in him. I remember uh, many years ago being in Kenya and going to a community, a shanty town right by the railway station. Awfully squalid place. And we went to a hut that was slightly bigger than a garden shed in a garden here in England. And five adults were living there, uh, a mum and a dad and three grown up boys. As they stepped out of that hut in that awful place, with no hope, they shone with a light that that, that I can only say was God in them. A joy and a hope and a purpose in a life that comes from knowing Jesus Christ. Wisdom is proved right in her actions. The other thing that Jesus says to the critics is, don't come to me if you're wise, 
and learned in your own minds because you, you will never discover God. If you have no time for Jesus, if you have no inclination to hear his side of the story, you will never, ever find him. Now, Jesus here is not talking about um, wisdom. He says these things have been hidden from the wise and the learned. He's not talking here about intellectual power. What he's talking about here is intellectual pride. Because my pride says that I have no room to consider another opinion. My pride says that I've already decided what is true and I know better than God. And Jesus says to them, if you have no space to hear, if you are wise in your own eyes, you won't find me. I will remain hidden. William Barclay, the Bible commentator, says this, it's not cleverness that shuts out, it's pride. It's not stupidity which admits, it's humility. And those are hard words that Jesus speaks. But we're not to grow despondent because things can change. Paul, the apostle, is responsible for one third of the writing of the New Testament. And yet Paul was one who's described as a fierce opponent of the church, violently opposed to Christians. And yet in this extraordinary encounter with Jesus, he completely turns around. And God is looking for critics to turn around and to come to him and to open half an ear to possibly consider another way. If you are prepared to do that, then you may just hear the voice of Jesus and you may discover him even though for many years you thought he wasn't even there to be found. Secondly, Jesus speaks to the complacent. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. But he says more to them. Take my yoke upon me and learn from me. Take my yoke upon me and learn from me. He's been speaking out previously to three towns where he had been ministering, Chorazin, Bethsaida, Capernaum. He says, woe to you. You guys have enjoyed being so blessed by me. Jesus healed the sick there. He spoke out the good news of the kingdom of God about new life, new hope, new power. And they were happy to receive the blessings of him speaking out, but they weren't prepared to turn and to follow. They hosted him, they received his miracles, they even enjoyed the notoriety of his presence there. But ultimately they were indifferent to him. They take all the benefits, but don't choose to turn around and live their life another way. Face to face with God himself, they enjoy what he gives them but without any response. And I guess you could say, in this time, in our history as a country, we live in similar times. They now describe the United Kingdom as a post-Christian country. We've built our legal system and our moral system and our society on Christ values, but we've lost him. Jesus is to the United Kingdom, I think, a bit like a, a passport. Maybe he's not even that anymore. We know he's there, we enjoy all the privileges of citizenship, but without any effort on our side to live that way. Have we used all that God has given us wisely as a country for blessing those within our borders and outside of our borders? Have we loved our neighbours as ourselves, our European neighbours, as well as our immediate neighbours? Have we been generous and gracious in all that we meet? Have we spoken up against regimes that oppress the weak? Have we used our privilege and our might as an island nation to speak out for those who have no voice? Have we ensured that everyone in this country has equal opportunity, regardless of race or colour or economic background, 
or differences. Maybe our country is a bit like Bethsaida or Capernaum or Chorazin, that we've enjoyed the blessings of Jesus, but without the effort to follow him. And Jesus says to the complacent, take my yoke upon me and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble of heart, and you'll find rest for your souls. And we know the yoke is the wooden block that sits on top of a horse or an ox to pull a carriage or a plough or whatever it is. And Jesus says, my yoke is easy. What he asks us to do as individuals is to accept him as our Lord not just enjoy him being our saviour, but being our Lord, the one who we follow day to day, almost like a servant. We look to him for our orders. We look to him at the beginning of each day and say, what would you have me do today? How can I serve you? We accept his leadership, his authority in our life, his lead. Like Ollie said a couple of weeks ago, I think for many of us, we live our Christian lives where God is a cheerleader. We look to him to bless our plans rather than look to him to make our plans. Finally, Jesus speaks to the ones who long for him. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Jesus speaks to those people who are desperate for something more of life those who are exhausted with searching for truth and hope in all kinds of places and always coming up short. Come to me, all you who are exhausted, trying to find life in other places. Come to me, all you who are weighed down, trying to live a good life, trying to do the right thing, tying yourself in knots to please others, to do the right thing by your own standards, to live the right life by what others dictate on you, what you dictate on yourself. Come to me, you who are so weighed down by those burdens. You constantly feel like you fail. You don't feel peace. You don't know peace. Come to me, he says, and take my yoke upon me. Take my authority. Surrender your lives to me and follow me. It's a big ask, isn't it? But Jesus says two things. First of all, I'm gentle and humble of heart. He's not a maniacal dictator who abuses us and forces us to do things which aren't right. Then we would never trust him. He's gentle and humble of heart. He died for us. I think his credentials speak for themselves. He doesn't use us. He loves us. And the second thing he says is, if you do that, that you'll find rest for your souls. It's a strange paradox, isn't it? In doing things for God, we find rest. The more you trust me with your life, the more you trust your decision-making, your coming and your going, your big decision, but your little decisions as well, you will find rest. Rest, says Jesus, is not about doing nothing. When we do nothing, often that can lead us into all kinds of tricky situations. Rest, I think in our world's eyes, says excessive drinking or television or consumerism or eating or it might be pornography, consuming to satisfy that whole within. The rest that Jesus talks about one is where we are being used purposefully, where our lives have a purpose to them. The word he uses for the yoke, it's translated as easy, but actually a better translation would be it's well fitted. Jesus knows each one of us. He knows how to fit well a life for us that will give us such a fulfillment that it doesn't feel like effort. It actually feels like rest. Where could we start with this yoke, what could be our starting point? Well, Jesus in his two great commands, he said, love God with all your heart, 
in soul and mind. And he said, love your neighbor as yourself. Will we allow ourselves to live under that yoke? The yoke of just getting to know God better, loving him, surrendering our worries, our anxieties, our ambition, our pride, our decisions to know better than him. Are we prepared to surrender those to him, to love him, and then to love our neighbor as ourselves? That's a life's work, isn't it? It's why I've chose today not to wear my dog collar, because I didn't want you to hear this as a message coming from a preacher. Somebody has it all sorted out. I don't. I get it right some of the time. I get it wrong much of the time. But I choose this. I, I choose to follow Jesus with as much of my heart as leans to him. And I pray that he would make my heart turn more and more to him. That I could follow him with everything that I have. And my experience is in this life that he not only has blessed us, but also he's given us a well-fitted life of all trust him. To the critic, to the complacent, to the, to the Christ follower, he says, come and follow me and you'll find rest for your souls. Shall we pray? Lord Jesus, thank you so much that you love us, that you came for us, you died for us, and you rose for us. And thank you for this um, offer to walk with you side by side, yoked together, walking out the path that you have for us. Thank you, Lord, in that we'll find rest. And so, Lord, today we do surrender our lives to you whether for the first time or afresh. We say, have everything that we have, have all that we are. Take them, Lord. And we ask that we would walk that path that you guide us on. We take your yoke upon us. And Lord, we look forward to finding that rest in walking after you and following you, our faithful companion and Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Alex, for your word to us today. Uh, let's take a moment just to reflect, and particularly on the passage that we heard read earlier. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle, gentle and humble in heart. Father, we praise you and thank you that you have borne our burdens, that you have set us free to walk with you. Lord, enable us by your grace to follow you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shall we affirm our faith in the words of the Creed? And if you are able, then please do stand. And we say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and he is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We're going to take a moment now to share in the peace together, and sadly that's still not a possibility for us all, so that if you are with friends uh, in, a, in a bubble, then you can use the British Sign Language, which we've been using over these past few weeks, and that, that is if you hold your thumb and finger together and your fingers outstretched and and you say, the peace of the Lord be always with you. So the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Amen. We come now to share in our Holy Communion prayer together. And uh, when it comes to the breaking bread and taking wine, Sylvia, my wife, is going to come up and share in that moment with me. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
it is right to give thanks and praise. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned towards your world. In love you gave us Jesus, your Son, to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home to the city where angels sing your praise. We join with them in heaven's song. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light with signs of faith and words of hope. He touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it and said, this is my body given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it and said, This is my blood shed for you all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. This is our song. <clears throat> Hosanna in the highest. Therefore, Father, with this bread, and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Send your Holy Spirit on us now, that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with opened eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven, where all creation worships you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. And I invite you all to pray the prayer for spiritual communion that is going to come up on your screen in just a moment. And Helena and Ian will sing a lovely reflective song whilst we are celebrating and whilst you are taking uh, your time to reflect on the words that are coming up on the screen. The words of Helena will sing are, Oh, let the Son of God enfold you with his spirit and his love. Let him fill your heart and satisfy your soul Oh, let him have the things that hold you, and his spirit, like a dove, will descend upon your life and make you whole.
say together our post-communion prayer. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We're now going to stand, if we're able, and worship again as Helena and Ian come to lead us in our final hymn of worship. As we end our service today, let's resolve to spend more time seeking stillness in our hearts and resting in Jesus. We make a good start by singing Dear Lord and Father of Mankind with its beautiful words and tune. Sense be dumb 
let flesh return, speak through the earthquake, wind and fire, O still small voice of calm, O still small voice of Good, well, we've just got time for uh, a notice and uh, some news. And uh, the main piece of news is just to, to give you feedback on the questionnaire uh, that many of you filled in last week. Thank you so much for all of you uh, that took the time to fill it in. Don't worry if you didn't, it's okay. We had 170 people who completed it, which is great. It gives us such a great idea of how you're feeling about online church and also how you're feeling about coming back to a physical space to worship too. I also really want to thank those of you that completed that, that weren't part of St Paul's Church before lockdown, but have joined us and have become part of our family during it, during it. We are so glad that you are here and we want to continue to make you feel welcome and loved for as long as you choose to be part of the online community here. So thank you too. Now what we have learned from you in the questionnaires going out there is a third of you feel comfortable coming to a church building to worship on a Sunday morning. Uh, two thirds of you feel either uncomfortable or, or you really don't want to, to do it. And so we hear you loud and clear. So for the two thirds, we just want to reassure you that we are going to continue with online church. It's been really interesting learning uh, from your feedback what you've thought of online church. I know that some of you right now are watching this in your pyjamas. I know that some of you are, are watching it at eight o'clock this evening. Um, we're engaging with church differently, both in what we were and when we, when we engage with it too. But I want to remind you that, that church, even if it's seen through a screen, doesn't mean it's not church. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. Many of you said it's difficult to sing, particularly if you're alone and you feel isolated. We don't have that gathered sense of being together. That's hard. But I do know that God is greater than those things and that we can worship him, even though we're scattered uh, across this town and we're scattered even across this country and that God is here. God is here with us right now. And as we gather week by week, we can encounter him by his Holy Spirit, speaking to us through the sermons that we hear, through the Bible being preached, through the songs that we sing, through the prayers that we pray and through that space we give him before and during and after the service to recognise that the presence of God is in this place, wherever your place is. Now, for those of you that said that you are up for coming together in a building, this is what we are planning. The wardens, the staff team, a number of others we have spoken, we've talked together. And through August, beginning the 2nd of August, we're going to be holding a service at 10 o'clock at St Paul's Church. Again, it's going to feel different from your feedback. I know the things that you are looking forward to so much, are singing, that close proximity, a communion. Some of these things we can't do. We will have communion, but we will struggle. We can't sing and, uh, and we're going to need to be socially distanced. And it will feel odd and it will feel a bit strange. And so we'd really ask you to go with us and help us to learn week by week how we can make sure that as we do come together in a physical space in the church building, uh, that we still encounter God. Give him his glory that he deserves. Hear his word and be filled with the Spirit so that we can go out into our community and into our world and share the love of Jesus uh, with all those people he puts across our path. Help us to learn. It's not going to be perfect. I know that. And we're going to learn week by week. And the plan would be that as we, what we learn through August, we can really implement uh, more into September and through the rest of the autumn with no further restrictions coming, God willing. So, Thank you for going with us on this journey so far. Thank you for um, continuing with us. And uh, for those that gather on Sunday, and I'll let you know next Sunday all the details you'll need about how to, to be part of a physical service, uh, what you need to do, when you need to be where. Uh, we'll tell you all of those details next week. We're going to be planning, thinking through those things, thinking through checklists, thinking through cleaning the church, all the practicalities that uh, we need to, to make sure that we can gather safely and well. Um, we'll tell you all of those things next week. Uh, but in the meantime, God bless you. Have a great week. Thank you for joining us together this morning as we have come to worship the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We look forward to welcoming you again soon, but now we come to our blessing. 
May this day bring Sabbath rest to your hearts and your homes. May God's image in you be restored and, uh, and your imagination in God be restored. May the gravity of material things be lightened and the relativity of time slow down. May you know grace to embrace your own finite smallness in the arms of God's infinite greatness. And may God's word feed you and his spirit lead you into the week and into the life to come. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.